There's the U.S. national soccer team getting ready for the World Cup, winning a friendly match against Nigeria last night. But what are their chances for the biggest prize in global sports? Who will win the Cup? ABC's Paula Ferris went to our experts at ESPN's 538 for some answers. Who better to take on predicting the world's biggest championship tournament than 538 guru Nate Silver? The election oracle has a soft spot for soccer, too. You played soccer, but your career ended when? I think in sixth or seventh grade, it was my least worst sport. <laughs> I was only kind of terrible at soccer. And now Nate and his team have whipped up their World Cup forecast. So it's all based on numbers. It's all based on numbers. There's not any subjective component to it. We're trying to account for both the quality of the athletes as well as team performance. Nate found everything counts, even the small things like getting there. The farther you travel, the tougher to win. Especially east to west, that might help the other South American teams. It might hurt a team like Japan, uh, who's coming from the other side of the world. But the big question for American fans, how will the U.S. do? Last time, the team advanced out of the group stage, and Nate gives them a 37% chance to do it again. They played pretty well together as a team. But the chances the U.S. wins it all? Nate says it's just 4%. Well, make that 0.4%. So one chance in 200, 250 or so. In the words of Jim Carrey. So you're saying there is a chance. There is a chance. I mean, look, if you go back to the NCAA tournament, things like this can happen. It's a tough year to be an underdog. That's because of teams like these, the heavy hitters, Brazil, Argentina, Spain, and Germany. Well, you're calling it a murderer's row. You have four terrific teams that might be favorites in, in any other year. OK, big drum roll. Who are you picking to win the 2014 World Cup? So it's Brazil's cup to lose. I wish I had a more dramatic answer for you, but I feel like anyone who doesn't say Brazil is trying too hard to be contrarian. Way to go out on a limb. Yeah, look, I mean, I'm the guy who got a lot of credit in 2012 for betting on the favorite, right? I mean, this is a year in particular where it's a good year for the favorites. All right, Nate, thank you so much. We'll be watching. I'll see you in Rio. Thank you. Nate's full World Cup predictions tomorrow on 538.com. Now let's go back to Rio. Right now we're going to see Julie Foudy, ESPN's Julie Foudy. Look at the scene there where the World Cup is going to begin later this week. Of course, Julie Foudy uh, won the World Cup twice for U.S. women's soccer. Julie, we just heard Nate's hard truth. 0.4% chance for Team America. Even the coaches said the team can't win. I know. And although, George, they look good last night, the U.S. against Nigeria, it's probably pretty realistic because all the big boys are here, as you heard Paula say. However, here's the good news for the United States. The strongest team they've probably had in a very long time and the deepest team. The biggest challenge for them, of course, is they're put in this group of death, which is so hard. Ghana, their first game, knocked them out of the World Cup, the last two World Cups. Portugal has the best player in the world in Cristiano Ronaldo. And then Germany, who's won three World Cups, runner-up four times. That's their group. So that's the big challenge. But we're looking at baby steps right now, baby steps for the U.S. And how do you handicap the cup overall? You agree with Nate that anyone who picks Brazil is really trying too hard to be contrarian? I, I actually am going to be a contrarian here, George. And uh, I, I think Brazil is the obvious choice, of course, being the host here. But I'm going with Argentina. Argentina, besides having one of the best players in the world in Lionel Messi, has a tremendous team as well. They're from South America, of course. They've got a lot of fans coming. So I'm, I'm going to go with Argentina to win this World Cup and not Brazil, because I think there's tremendous pr pressure on Brazil being the host. Finally, it looks so beautiful right there right now, but there have been a lot of protests, a lot of anger, some security concerns. Uh, how's that playing down there? Well, it, it, it's interesting because Brazil is known for this love of football and this joy, and it's in their heart and in their souls. But there is this undercurrent. When you walk around, I was out yesterday, there's this undercurrent of concern about how much money was spent on this World Cup. And surprisingly, everyone thought the anti-government protests were going to be the big issue. But really what is being the most dis disruptive so far are the strikes. And Sao Paulo, with the opening game on Thursday, in a city of 30 million people, they are having a transit strike in its fourth day. And that's become a real concern. And you're seeing this sadness almost at the $11 billion being spent. And so when you look at it, how this Brazil team does, 
is going to be really a test of the attitude of this country and how they approach this World Cup. Important for the national spirit. Julie Fowdy, thanks very much. You can watch all the World Cup action all day long on ESPN. Coverage begins Thursday.